It's 10 o'clock Mountain Time. It's Thursday, February 9th, uh, 2021. And uh, that means it's time for Tom and Shane, business and politics. Uh, Tommy Galhoff, uh, your morning mayor in uh, Bozeman, Montana. And uh, Shane Matalbin, half man, half amazing in Vancouver, British Columbia. How you doing, man? Today's a big day. You know, we're in the house. And if you want to keep the house, you have to learn how to sell. So that's what we're talking that's about. Sure. How you keep your house, your home, and your business. That's what we're going to talk about. Yeah, today we're going to talk about sales training, sell the solution and not the product. And uh, we're going to get into that uh, right away. But first of all, we got to let you know that if you're watching us on YouTube, you need to subscribe to this channel and uh, <clears throat> ring the notification bell. And uh, you'll always be notified of any podcast that we put up. We're here every Tuesday and Thursday at 10 o'clock, of course. Like us and leave a comment because YouTube likes that kind of stuff. And also, <clears throat> excuse me, we're on Patreon. And um, if you'd like to support the show, uh, we would be happy if you would uh, consider doing that. You get some really special perks if you do. And... Uh, just for uh, just for being three bucks a month, uh, we'll put your name up or your business name up or your business website up or whatever on all of our podcasts, as long as you are a uh, uh, supporter of the show. So uh, you can get some uh, get some advertising at a very low price on our podcast. So we hope that you will you will uh, consider doing that. And let's see some other things we got to talk about. Uh, as I mentioned, we're here every Tuesday and Thursday, and we'll take on a, a business topic uh, every day to help your small business or your startup. And uh, for more uh, information and articles, uh, go to our website, uh, TomAndShane.com, TomAndShane.com. Pretty easy to remember, TomAndShane.com. Get over there and check that out. And also, our uh, business slash political show is on radio every Saturday, 8 to 11, Mountain Time. Click a listen now at kmmsam.com. And uh, you can uh, call us on the phone. You can text us. You can do anything that uh, the national radio shows do. We do all of that on Saturday. And uh, if you missed any of our past shows, uh, you can watch them or listen to them at kmmsam.com. Just click on Tom and Shane's podcast and um, you'll be over there. So. Let's get rocking and rolling here um, because we want to talk about we want to talk about uh, solution positioning. Shane, uh, first person to fly solo across the Atlantic was well. We know who that and, was, Charles well, Lindbergh. Well, not everybody knows that. I mean, that's that was back in the nineteen what nineteen twenties somewhere back there, nineteen twenty nineteen thirty. Yeah, here to St. Louis. Yeah. Spirit of St. Louis, 33 hours uh, sitting on a wicker wooden chair in his airplane, the Spirit of St. Louis. <laughs> 36 yeah, hours on that. Yeah, but he needed room for the fuel in back. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, everything had to be stripped out of there, and you could only have the fuel in there. Well, uh, yeah, Lindbergh was the first person to fly a solo across the Atlantic. The second person, of course, was the household name of Bert Hinkler. Bert Hinkler was the second guy to fly solo across the Atlantic Ocean, right? So now if you didn't know the, uh, if you did, may not have known the first guy or the second guy, is there any hope you'd know the third person? And the third person, Shane, would have been? Amelia Earhart. Yeah, exactly. Now, here's the very important question of what we're going to talk about today. Was Amelia Earhart the third person to fly solo across the Atlantic or the first what? Oh, my gosh. In this in this day of, of woke moment, you'd have to admit she was a woman. Yep. She was the first woman. And that's what we're going to talk about today. Positioning your business to where you are separated from all your competitors in your own uh, special section, your own position. <clears throat> we want all of the competitors grouped over here and we want you in the center um, being the uh, the main option because of positioning. And that's what we're going to that's what we're going to uh, talk about today is how do you do that? And we're going to we're going to uh, cover that 
uh, today, but uh, positioning is the technique of marketing and advertising your products or services in such a way that it groups your competition together and sets you apart as something better at the same time. Very powerful technique. And we're going to talk about how to use it today. Of course, that's why we're here, <laughs> in case you didn't know. So we're going to talk about uh, why do customers buy what they buy? Uh, do do uh, We talked about this on the show in the past. Um, we have wants and needs, Shane. Do you, do you really need that Snickers bar? Do you really need wheels for your car? Do you really need those things? Or are they... Uh, are they things that you want? Well, that's exactly right. We talk about that all the time because that is the beginning of the decision to buy something as a consumer. So it's uh, an important thing to, to know or find out if you're dealing with someone. Are they there to look? Or are they there because they want something or need it? And that's right. Yeah, uh, we buy things because they make us feel something. Uh, when emotion and logic come in conflict, as uh, I've always said on this show a million times, um, you know, when uh, when that happens, when emotion and logic come in conflict, emotion always wins. People act emotionally. Uh, do I need that Snickers bar? Uh, yeah, I need it for energy. Um, what we'll do is we'll make an emotional decision and we'll create a logical argument to support that decision. So we don't act, uh, we don't act normally as uh, human beings. We, we're weird, <laughs> to say the least. Well, that's because we're humans and we have so many emotions that direct our life. You know, our greed, our need, our want, our fear. Mm -hmm. I could go on, but the important thing is, mm -hmm. is that it's a characteristic of a good business that you have good salespeople. And uh, that's why Tom is ad is addressing this today because it's it's, a, uh, it's the link pin in the chain of wealth. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's for sure. Yeah, and um, you know you may be your only salesperson to begin with, and Shane's right that uh, uh, a lot of us have uh, sales um, in our mind incorrectly. Um, you don't have any problem telling someone about a movie that you liked you'll be happy to tell a friend yeah i like this movie here's why the people are in it storyline whatever it was really good uh why not go see it so we don't have any problem doing that at all with with a with even strangers but when it comes to our product it's like we're we're a little it's it's like our child we don't know if the person's gonna like our child or not <laughs> You know, we're we're afraid they may. Oh, that's an ugly kid. <laughs> you know? But that, that's, we got to get that out of our. You got to get that out of your mind, and uh, you know the the positioning will really help you help you do that. And that's what we're going to talk about as we go along here. So, how does all this tie into increased sales? Well, we want to we want to increase sales, obviously. So. When customers buy things, they're looking for a solution, right, Shane? They're looking for a uh, fill, uh, fill the need, find the need and fill it, I guess. Um, your customers having pain. Solve the problem, fill the need. Absolutely. That's the one of two issues that you're mm -hmm. dealing with. Yep, that's it. Yep. Yeah, the, uh, the, uh, the customer is feeling the pain of something. So you, you have the ability to relieve that pain or eliminate that pain with your product or services, whatever they may be. So this and is the other important thing about thinking. that. The other part, the other important thing about need is as a sell, as a person selling, you know, you're halfway there, you're halfway to closing the sale. So that, that, that's, that's a premium that, that gives you an edge with the customer to answer their questions, show the products and, and uh, try and get information that will help you close the final sale. Yeah. Yeah. If you can position a solution to your customer that allows you to solve the customer's problem and eliminate your competitors at the same time, then you really got something going there. Uh, that's, that's what we're talking about today is how do you, how do you um, petition all kind of lumped together? And if we look at, 
uh, for example, if we look at pain relievers, Shane, uh, mm -hmm. Bayer aspirin uh, talks about pre preventing second heart attack, right? That's their big claim to claim to fame. That's right. The oh, what is it? The eighty milligram. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the, the 80 milligram uh, will present a, uh, prevent a second heart attack by uh, some people, or at least help prevent one. I don't know if it'll, I don't want to <laughs> guarantee things for Bayer. <laughs> no, they've been marketing <laughs> the aspirin for 100 years. And yeah. uh, uh, Siemens in Europe, you know, was the big pusher on that. And, uh, mm -hmm. you know, there's been all kinds of science, all kinds of studies for over 100 years about yeah. aspirin. And, they, and they, they really still don't know what it actually does they just know it works yeah well aspirin used to be a brand name but it became so common that it was forced to give up aspirin as a brand name so uh bayer and other um uh pain relievers took it over of course and mm -hmm. uh, gave them brand names but they were aspirin in uh in content um but if we if we continue on with pain relievers, each one of these pain relievers have positioned themselves with a specific niche. For example, Excedrin is the headache medicine. Uh, Advil is a fever reducer. Uh, Aleve is 12 hours. So each of these, um, uh, can we take any of these products for a headache? Do we have to take Excedrin for a headache? <laughs> I mean, can we take aspirin for a headache? Can we take a leave for a headache? Can we take, uh, you know, uh, a leave for a headache? Sure. But these companies have set themselves apart by targeting a specific niche of pain relief or whatever. And they're a good example of how big business uses positioning to uh, to make this happen. So that's and the uh, reason this 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 type of sale is easy as an example is because the demographics is it is everyone there, there, there's not mm -hmm. a specific necessarily a specific demographic for it so everyone needs this relief and uh, that makes it in some ways a lot easier to, to advertise and market it yes it does yeah well um the other things that we we need to talk about here is the um, you know we're talking about the power of positioning so we need to talk about uh um, we need to talk about the uh, solution positioning, and it's got two very powerful advantages. And we want to talk about the uh, the first advantage uh, that you have is that um, when you solve a problem that others can, of course, um, you can offer the customer a way to get out of that painful emotional um, problem. But will they pay a premium for the remedy? In other words, this may also affect your pricing of your product and service. When we go to a doctor and we're referred to a specialist, uh, isn't there a perception, uh, Shane, that we're going to pay more for that, uh, or our insurance is going to pay more to that specialist than just our normal practitioners? That's right. If somebody is uh, making a purchase, whether they want it or need it for personal use, that always comes into play, doesn't it? Yeah. Um, you know, it's it's obviously sometimes you'll spend more on others than you will on yourself. Uh, that might sound strange, but people do have that uh, view of uh, consume, consumption. You know, like, can I get this somewhere cheaper? Because they, you mm -hmm. know, they're getting it for themselves. You know, as opposed to a product that they want or need to maybe gift or give away or getting for someone else, they're there to either pick it up because they've been asked to or they're there because they think it's something they'll want. Yeah. Well, I, I know uh, in many cases, a lot of us have gone out shopping for something we've never bought before, like a freezer or a, a dishwasher or something like that. And we go out and we find the price and holy cow, these things are really expensive. Oh, my God. But after you do some shopping around, you think, oh, that's a pretty reasonable price because you you've become adjusted to the relief of the pain and the positioning that the person has of their product and what it offers and the features right. and benefits. Yeah. And the amazing thing about this, too, and from my own experience, I think Tom will agree, you know, in the last 30 years, uh, when you're talking about like appliances, I don't see that much of a variation really in price. You know, no. the, the, you know, it, it's like it's it's sort of held in the same range between five hundred and twelve, fifteen hundred dollars. 
Uh, it's all the bells and whistles that you may want that are, you know, it's like a car, right? Do you, do, sure. do you buy the stripped down priced mm -hmm. car or do you buy the car with everything that you want? Yeah. When we, um, I used to sell office machines and back in the, uh, back in the seventies, uh, late sixties, early seventies, um, we sold one of the first, um, electronic add, subtract, multiply, divide computers. We had a $700 model and a $900 model, a 900 one did square root. And now you can buy these for two bucks at a checkout yeah. somewhere. You know, uh, when I first started selling VCRs, they were six, seven hundred dollars. When, to me, when they, you know, my memory yeah. takes me to printers. Oh my yeah. goodness! When, in the last fifty years, you know, when they first developed and created the printer, uh, when you uh, would go to get cartridges, you know, you didn't you'd buy the cartridges. You usually buy one or two because they came in packages like that. Then yeah. into the nineties and two thousands, all of a sudden, you know, you. You'd buy a printer, and it might be five, ten years old. You go in, and and to uh, replace the cartridges was you know more expensive than buying a brand new one. Yeah, <laughs> so yeah, that's where we're at now. Yeah, you... <laughs> yeah, that's right. So waste yeah. becomes a big issue now because we only have twelve years left. Well, do I knew well, even though I can buy a new printer cheaper from my cartridges, maybe I should help save the planet. But you know, these are the <laughs> things that are so essential. To making someone feel comfortable to buy something uh, that that you can provide, and do it mm -hmm. in such a way that you 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 create a comfort zone for them while you're talking to them. Yeah, well, let's talk about advantage two of sol uh, solution positioning, and this is uh, a big advantage you have uh, if you have the customer's attention is to package items together, two or more things together will make it much harder for that customer to compare price with your competitors. So, you know, if you're selling a, a camera, for example, or, a, a, you know, something like that. Um, okay. Uh, what about a tripod, a carry case, uh, other accessories? And if you can package this deal, in many cases, it's really hard for the competitor to go or the customer to go across the street to the competitor and uh, compare that pricing. And That's we right. want to if, make if sure. customers like Tom is using as an example, you know, he's at your counter and uh, to upsell them, you suggest, well, do you have a carrying case? Uh, and, yeah. uh, you know, and uh, if they look, if they show interest in it, you can say to them, well, you know, I, I can give you six rolls of film if you buy the carrying case. Yeah. So these, these are the kinds that you, <laughs> these are the kinds of things you can do instantly having your own business because you can yeah. make that choice to upsell or you know the, the customer before you yeah it's it's quite a unique opportunity having your own business and making those kind of decisions in the moment yeah yeah i'm not sure you can buy film anywhere anymore but no i <laughs> i know you can at costco <laughs> well yeah but uh you you do a, a card a uh uh sim card to uh pop in there to uh hold your pictures on um Right. Well, most, yeah. most people don't use cameras anymore, but the people that do still yeah. have the opportunity and a place to go. I mean, yeah. I remember every drugstore, every grocery oh. store. Yeah. I mean, everybody had photo, you know, capability yeah. 20, 30 That's years right. ago. You yeah, know, it's a, it's a dying <laughs> business and it died fast with the yeah. cell phone. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it's. Uh, it, well, and that's that's the importance of what we want to talk about today, because, you know, locking yourself into these certain uh, things, um, things evolve. There's no question about it. Things yeah. change and uh, and they and they evolve. But, uh, yeah, if you can package things together, you will have a big up on your competitors um, by uh, by doing that. Now, when we talk about increasing the price because of, uh, you know, you're able to solve the problem. Uh, we don't want to gouge customers. Don't get us wrong here that we, we want to, we want to be fair to the customer because if you're in a small market or if you're in a small community, uh, they're going to find out pretty quick if you're a crook and the word's going to spread pretty fast. So but make to overcome sure that, that the easiest question that you can talk, you know, when you're talking to a customer in your own private little store 
and they seem interested and you you know you get this look in their eye or you look at them and and you think maybe this is something they it's a great question well what, what, what could you afford to pay for this is a great question mm -hmm. because that creates more information more information drives the sale so the more yeah. you learn about what they want how comfortable they are what they can afford all these matters that you can think of create mm -hmm. the opportunity to close the sale nope you're absolutely right yeah um you know in my seminars um i talk about i've i've got this um you know kind of nice uh pen that i use that i bought in a stationary store you know it's about 25 bucks or so yeah and, like those, yeah. like those space pens that could that could you yeah, know, they write, right yeah they write yeah they write upside down, down. yeah they write <laughs> upside down they write underwater all that stuff yeah you know, and then so. and then they put lights on in in yeah. in telephone and in pens <laughs> yeah <laughs> but in this case you know i asked people i i've got this 25 dollar pen new <clears throat> Uh, what's it worth used? It's used. So what now what's it worth? And <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, people will usually say, oh, half price, you know, 10, 12 bucks, something like that. And then I tell them, well, the pen doesn't work. So now what's it worth? And they'll probably say nothing. And I'll tell them the reason it doesn't work is because of ink in the cartridge. Uh, there's an ounce of solid gold. Now what's it worth? So, <laughs> so now it's pretty, it's a pretty reasonable pen at 25 bucks, <laughs> but the, the, and, the and, and, and another thing that we, we, we would like to encourage you because I think this is important. Uh, you should have a business diary behind your counter. And when you feel good and you've closed a sale and a customer is left happy, you know, take note, write down what you learned in that experience. It, you know, if you're, you know, if, if you have something you want to read, while you're alone or you're not busy in your store, you know, behind the counter, you know, I always pick your diary up and, and go back and read about the, the lessons that you have already learned. It, it's a good way to keep you fresh and, and uh, in the moment to be able to make that sale, to keep that house and business. Yeah. Well, to finish up the training on the uh, pen, um, every time I gave you information about the pen, your perception of the price changed. So price is nothing more than perception and information as to what creates value and what doesn't. So if the pen doesn't work, it's not worth anything. If it's got gold in it, it's worth a lot more. It's not a pen anymore. And if so, someone looks at you and, if, and the customer looks at you and says something to the effect, well, I was down the street and I mean, I can, I can get a similar pen for, you know, uh, X number of dollars or whatever mm -hmm. less, you know, again, instantly you have the opportunity to close the sale by saying, I'll match the price or I'll give you 10% off, you know, keeping in mind, you have to make mm -hmm. a profit on whatever you sell. So you can't sell it for less than what it's worth, but you can sell it for the, its fair value that you've paid and it generates a sale. Well, I'd rather not buy the business. Uh, I'd rather not give it away. I'd rather the guy go down the street and buy the lesser, the lesser product. Uh, cause I don't want to, I don't want to get the, I don't want to give customers the impression that, uh, it's, it's, let's make a deal. Um, because that, that again, is not a, is not a good way to be, do business. You need to be firm in your pricing, but you need to justify your price. You know, um, if, if, if it's the exact same item, and the person is selling it for less and he bought it from the same supplier I do, I would just assume they go down there and he lose the money, not me. So, well, in that case, make sure that after work, you walk down to the store and find out what they're selling that pen for. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. When I, uh, when I was selling um, electronics, uh, we would go to competitors and look at all their stuff. And uh, their their salespeople would come to our place and look at our stuff. We all knew it was going on, you know. We, <laughs> we knew the salespeople from the other stores, and they knew us, you know. And every once in a while, they would chase us out, and we'd chase them out. Uh, but you know, they're over here writing down prices and model numbers and all of that. 
Uh, so uh, they knew what we had. We knew what they had. And uh, so it was very competitive business. So, and uh, it was a very tight margin. The other thing, getting back to packaging, uh, in many cases, for example, if you put a tripod with a camera, the chances are that tripod has a pretty high markup uh, in price, more so than the camera does. So you can be flexible on the tripod and uh, still be very profitable in uh, making that uh, package deal. So a lot of uh, make sure you understand the things that go with a product or service <clears throat> with the <clears throat> with the profit margin on that product is. And well, I uh, think that's, you that's can, very kind of you to confirm what I said before, because the bottom line yeah. is you need to generate revenue and you need to keep you keep generating cash flows. So absolutely. Uh, yeah. The importance of today's lesson is try and position yourself with mm -hmm. your package product to sell. And uh, yep. that's the importance of today's lesson. That's for sure. Well, to finish up uh, this uh, little uh, tirade here on <laughs> whatever, uh, think about the last time you bought something. What solution did that product or service provide for you? Uh, would you have paid more uh, for the same results? So take a look at your products and services. Uh, list the benefits of each one that you get and uh, then come back and list what the customer problems you solve. What are the most profitable solutions uh, for you to do? And that's all customers are really looking for. They're looking for you to solve their problem. And uh, the, more, the more benefits you can provide with that product or service, the more valuable it becomes to the customer. That's, that's very true. And, and a lot of businesses, by the way, um, have become very successful in providing a return policy that, you know, is uh, mm -hmm. favorable to the customer. Uh, yep. It depends yes. on the product, of course, you're selling. But, mm -hmm. you know, providing a return policy, you know, if they purchase something and, yeah. you know, that you're prepared to say if you, you know, 15 days, there, there are a lot of 15 days. You know that creates a bit of a loyalty with customer because they when walk when they walk out the door and they are they are satisfied and they keep the product. The next time they want to buy something, they may come back to you because you said that. that's for sure. Yeah, they will. Uh, if you are going to have a return policy, though, make sure that you have a clear understanding with your supplier that they are going to take that back and under what circumstances if the customer does return it. So uh, make sure that you've got uh, that you've got that in some kind of a written form as to uh, what they'll take back, what they won't take back. And, um, you know, just make sure that you're covering your bases uh, if you're going to offer that that protection to the customer. That's right. There are a lot of products out there that you can sell in your in your newfound store and uh, you can do it on a consignment, actually, where, mm -hmm. you, you know, you you look for different types of products and you call up a company and say look i have three different types of printers but i'm happy to sell yours you know on consignment you know if you want to send me a, a display because i'm not going to sell a display um and in this day and age of overnight F, uh, you know fedex delivery and and mm -hmm. so forth uh it, it's a it's a great way to uh, maintain a, a low cost uh, in your financial statements and your marketing statements of the inventory because anytime a, a store that you might have inventory becomes very, you know a classic example of of uh hardening your play because mm -hmm. uh you, you can find yourself having a lot of capital wrap, wrapped up in display products you can't sell yeah that's for sure yeah so <clears throat> yeah um with the uh, turnaround today, and as you mentioned, overnight, uh, and um, many uh, suppliers will provide delivery for you free. Um, you don't have to keep a large inventory anymore. You can turn inventory pretty quickly uh, on That's most true. items. So uh, by all means, uh, make and sure. And just know that all the big box stores from Walmart to uh, Home Depot and so forth, all Costco, most of everything they have in their stores is on consignment. And it's an amazing reality. Mm -hmm. uh, that's why when you go into Costco, if you want ketchup, you got one choice. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, a lot. 
<laughs> a a a fifty five gallon drum of ketchup is yeah, that's right. <laughs> but all, you know, but only one choice. <laughs> yep, that's it. <laughs> all right, product. All right. <laughs> Well, that's going to wrap it up for uh, positioning and uh, sell the solution, not the product. Uh, sell the solution to your customer. And if uh, if you're just joining us or whatever, uh, by all means, subscribe uh, to us on uh, YouTube. Subscribe. Hit that notification bell. You'll be notified whenever we have podcasts. And also like us and leave a comment. What would you like to see us do on this uh, show? What, uh, what uh, challenges do you have? And also, we're on Patreon. Um, you can uh, support the show with as little as $3 a month. And uh, we'll put your name up uh, significantly here on the podcast. And uh, your either your personal name, if you want that, or we can put your business name up, or we can put your website up, or we can put nothing up. <laughs> if you just want to support us, that's fine, too. Uh for a five dollar uh, donation, uh, we'll create some stuff just for you and no one else. So, uh, and a ten dollar donation, um, you get a personal one on one with us uh, right here, like we're doing uh, right now, either in private or public, whatever you, whichever you prefer. So, there's a lot of things we'll do that every month for you. Plus, we've got uh, copies of my books that will uh, get you free. And uh, well, not free because you're supporting us, but <laughs> they're free with your support. So uh, we hope that you will. Well, the uh, and the importance <laughs> about what Tom is suggesting to you, yes, it's an example of marketing, and and which is what we've talked about today. But think think of it also in terms of this: we'll grow with you as you grow with us, and that's what we're looking here for: is that people that uh, you know get get up every day and live to work because they have their own business so if you look at uh, three dollars a month thirty six dollars a year five dollars a month you know you're not you know you're, you're sixty dollars a year um that's a pretty a nice uh, budget item on your on your you know your cost line for marketing because uh, uh we will grow and and expand and your your uh comments your logo your advertisement will forever be online yeah 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 it, it, it lasts forever <laughs> so so uh hey somebody sees it somebody sees your website they go to your website hey that's what we're that's what we're talking about positioning position yourselves mm -hmm. with us because we offer something that people are going to return to see and uh your name can be here so check that out also uh if you missed any of our past shows uh and also uh, your name will be on our past shows as well so <laughs> you, you can't lose uh we're on uh, um kmmsam.com you can click on uh, past shows over there click on tom and change podcast and of course every saturday we do our uh business political radio show uh that is saturday 8 to 11 mountain time you can listen online at kmmsam.com you can call us, you can text us, uh, you can be a part of the program, and um, we hope that you will uh, try that out. And again, if you need samples, uh, go to KMMSAM.com, click on Tom and Shane's podcast, and you can hear our radio shows, our past radio shows, and get an idea of uh, what we do. So, all right, uh, thanks for watching and listening, and uh, say goodbye, Shane. I will indeed be happy, be safe, live in the moment. And live to work. Come home ha happy to your family. They want to see you through the front door with a smile on your face. That's for sure. Absolutely. Hey, all views are welcome here. And if you say it there, we'll think it here. Or if we'll, uh, if you think it there, we'll say it here. Either one. There you go. You got it right. You got it. <laughs> I'll get it right in a minute. <laughs> all right. We will see everyone again on Thursday with a brand new business topic. So until then, uh, by all means, uh, take care and uh, we'll see you on Thursday, 10 a.m. Mountain Time.